Hi! So I just realized uh, since I'm back from my large bicycle tour I didn't do a single lab update even though things have been happening. So let's change it. First thing I'm going to show you is uh, the new CAM functionality. So let's show you on the screen. So basically um, first thing that can be controlled by a CAM is the throttle. Now we've left it at the defaults um, minimum 0, maximum 4096, 95. Uh, that also applies to the CAM. The same range check. So we Let's just refresh. So by default this comes uh, with a setting single region uh, which says there is one port for throttle, one port for controlling the region strings. Now we set this to CAN. This essentially disables the analog inputs and now expects the throttle data to come in via CAN. So and now down here we gotta tell it how it comes in where I can. So let's map it to can ID number two, starting at the very first bit, stretching over 16 bits, and apply the internal scaling of 32. And map it as Rx. Now let's plot Oh, no. Oh, I haven't checked it yet. So, pot norm. So, right now it's stuck at minus 25. And let's start sending some data. So, we are sending 0x200. Yeah, whatever. You're going to see a change anyway. And bam, you see it jump up to a bit less region. Um, and if we edit this value, say to 300, goes up further, go to zero, goes down to zero, and then just for demonstration, let's say uh, we are sending throttle values, and now for some reason. There, the can messages uh, are no longer received, Boom. and it times out. It assumes zero throttle by default. And you can also see if we look at the error memory, warning, can timeout. Okay, now there's more can functionality. Um, on the digital inputs, and that doesn't, that needs even less configuration. <coughs> um, so, say this is what we need to map. Let's map this to can ID number three, starting at bit zero, stretching over what is it, six bits, and apply the internal scaling again. Map as Rx. Now I didn't prepare this. Bus number one, ID number three. The length is always eight. Never go for sh a shorter uh, value here. Okay, so 0x01. Zero zero and the rest is all zeros. Let's just make a copy. So now we see um, that we have set the cruise bit, and now actually um, the cruise control got active. We can plot it to, to see it better. That's our cruise bit. 
And if we set it to zero, well, it's zero. See, I think I've also implemented the timeout here. So let's go back to one. Stop sending. Oh, time's out. And likewise, it works uh, for all the other bits. There is um, a fixed mapping of the bits inside the firmware that cannot be modified right now. Um, so let's, for example, look at the start bit. And I think that's on bit number three. Um, no, on the second bit, basically. So I set this to two. Bam, we get a start signal. Yes, so uh, what happens here is that the actual uh, signals here, the digital inputs, are ORed with the GPIO signals. So you can either pull start high on the GPIO pin, and that makes it one, or you can pull it high via CAN, that also makes it one. If you pull them high on both, it's, yeah, it's also one. And yeah, this works for cruise control, start, break, forward, reverse, and BMS. Um, of course, it doesn't work for the DSAT pin, that wouldn't make sense. It also doesn't work for emergency stop. That, uh, it's got to be physical. And it also doesn't work for the mode protection switch, because it's also a physical pin. Um, yeah, so that's CAN. Uh, let's come to the next bit, which is the amp limit. Nothing much, I can show you on the screen for that. Um, so basically now I've started putting in uh, a motor current limit, because that can right now be a problem on, on high power conversions that you trip out too often. So um, I'm now trying to limit the current in the first place by um, derating the throttle if, yeah, if the motor current goes too high, preventing the trip. So that's currently going on. I've tested it today. It's still oscillating a bit, but eventually it will all come together. Um, Next thing is uh, the new mainboard, um, sitting over here. I'll just show you again. Uh, so I have been asked a lot of times when when can we buy it. So right now I'm doing a second revision, clearing out minor issues with the first revision, uh, revision and then I will be sending it to a manufacturer. And yeah, that's going to happen. I hope by the end of October I will have the boards sent here. And last but not least, I am attempting another conversion. I haven't picked the car yet, I've only picked the insides and that's going to be the leaf motor and inverter that's been donated to me. And. Um, yeah, I'm looking to, to buy two LEAF batteries to have a, a nice, nice high range car. And to do this I have started working on a, a LEAF adapter board. After all, I said I wouldn't do it, now I'm doing it. And yeah, here it comes. Uh, it's. Uh, yeah, it mounts the same mounting holes as the existing large one. Where is it? That one, I'm, I'm replicating the mounting holes. I uh, found a, a neat little trick to do that. Uh, basically, I put <laughs> the original board on my flatbed scanner and then converted uh, the image to a Gerber file with a simple threshold. Uh, looks like this. So you can see this is my scanned image and you can you get an idea where the pins are and where the holes are, the mounting holes are. And I've overlaid my drill file and I've also overlaid uh, the mainboard file to get this lined up correctly and hopefully this makes it one less redesign. 
Okay, that's all I wanted to talk about for today. Thanks very much for watching. Goodbye.